Now today we are going to be talking about how Blue Lock is introducing secondary weapons to a lot of characters in Blue Lock. We started to see this a lot in the NEL, and now it's going to be fun to see many more characters get introduced to their secondary weapon. In the beginning of Blue Lock, Ego talks about playing football from scratch to be able to work on their foundations. From then on, they would all be able to find a weapon that is suited for them. Every single striker carries their own unique weapon and they work on their bodies to be able to perfect it. This is the main point of the first selection to get everyone to figure out their weapon while also working around their teammates' weapons to be able to win games. They needed to be able to find victory with their weapons and use them to make a revolution. Every character has been able to find a weapon that they are good at and improve upon them as the series went on. What I love about Blue Lock is the uniqueness of everyone's weapons. There are many different styles and ways that people have showcased their weapons and it was cool to see the beginning foundation of them. Now the beginning of the second selection changed things up a bit because now you had to then know your weapon and use it to be able to score by yourself without any teammates. This caused a downfall and evolution of many players because if you lucked out due to your team winning then you could not possibly win this selection. However, many other players like Asagi were able to use that time work on his skills alone and focus on his weapons and what he lacked so that he would be ready in the future. He was able to find new sides of him he never knew he had and had a rapid growth rate from the system. This type of training was tremendous in Blue Lock and it really helped serve a purpose later on in the series. Ego's teaching and practice styles have really gone overlooked because he really is a smart individual who knows how to carve out great players. His training with Blue Lock Man and a ball rapidly coming to you allows you to shoot the ball off random passes but also at unpredictable timings. This made sense for a striker who would be scoring at will regardless of how good the pass was or how much time is left. Then in the second part of the second selection, you need to form a team of three and grasp chemical reactions with your teammates to win. Now after being able to turn football from 0 to 1, you know how to mix that in with others and heighten them to their limits. This was seen when Nagi and Batra were able to come together and use their abilities together to help score. The second selection provided help for individual scoring and also teamwork to connect two weapons together. To this day, I don't think there was something better than the second selection, where it felt like it was an all out battlefield that was do or die and a lot of people did not pass that selection. The weapons shown during this arc was phenomenal and we really got to see tough battles put on display and the uniqueness of weapons that were introduced from it. Now the NEL was an opportunity given by EGO for players to choose their own team to be able to rise to greater heights. The goal of this was to now demonstrate the uniqueness of their weapons. The golden formula for them in Japan will not work as easily in the big leagues so they needed to make sure they went to an environment that could help them fully develop their new weapons. We have seen now in the NEL that everyone starting in games from Blue Lock has advanced to a higher level and is gaining a secondary weapon. They needed to prove that they have value and can stand on the world stage and the best way to do that was to start increasing their own skills, but also getting new weapons to complement them. That not everyone will be a striker from Blue Lock was also a good way to advance for other positions as well. The use of secondary weapons does not mean you have to change your playstyle, but rather add a new one that complements it. The use of these secondary weapons are a new way of showcasing their uniqueness, but also to help advance their skills in the already main weapon. Characters were now able to make minor adjustments to be able to enhance their strongest weapons and this helped them a lot as they showcased their skills in the NEL. Now let's talk about some of the characters who have gained a secondary weapon so far. First we have Machiro and his main weapon is his dribbling. Machiro's dribbling style relies on his supreme technique and creativity to get through one player's defenses. His dribbling ability is so advanced that Asagi has noted before that it would be impossible for him to outright steal the ball in a 1 on 1. After fusing Levino's Jenga style with his monster trance, Machiro evolves his dribbling to be even more explosive, free flowing and unpredictable. After waiting and reading his opponent, Batra lunges toward the defender, performing a chop dribble between his legs while hugging the defender using their posture to limit their response and push himself forward with the ball. When the defender attempts to respond, Batra is able to push off the defender with ease while still following the ball and counteracting any further stops. This new secondary weapon really fits Batra and his dribbling as his environment in Barca helped with their free flow and creativity styled football. Batra fusing with Lavino paved a new way of uniqueness for Batra that allowed him to showcase his value as he is now currently the second highest player in Blue Lock earnings. Next we have Kunigami. Kunigami's first weapon was his left leg shooting power. Kunigami has a near pinpoint power shot specifically from his left leg that he uses to score incredibly powerful shots with a standard range for shooting being within 28 meters. After having competed in the wildcard path, Kunigami exhibits the ability to use both of his feet to score goals. He admits he was forced to develop the skill to survive in the wild card, but was only able to do it in a short period of time due to his physical attributes. While he can use both feet, Kunigami's left foot is still by far more powerful, but he chooses to use his right foot for almost all of his shots in the NEL. With his new right leg shot, he can shoot with both feet and has a good range shot as well with his right foot, just like his left foot. He was in the wild card to become like Noel Noah and he can now showcase his uniqueness by being ambidextrous. This is a huge ability for him as he is one of the best physical skills in Blue Lock, but now can also shoot from either foot. Then we have Shigiri. Shigiri's weapon is his speed. Shigiri has naturally strong leg muscles and expert footwork, which enables him to run down the field at incredible speeds. Shigiri is generally considered to be the fastest player in Blue Lock and only players with immense speed like Shido, Otoya, and Zentetsu can compete with him. While his speed is rivaled by a handful of players as of yet, no one has been able to beat him in a direct contest of maximum speed. 
Shigeru has even sped past IQ, the number one defender of the Japan under 20. This speed, combined with his perception and awareness of positioning, enables him to choose the appropriate breakthrough point in an opponent's defense and speed through it. In addition to this, Shigeru has demonstrated the ability to directly kick the ball and follow it, resulting in a wide dribble that can break apart an enemy's formation. It is for these reasons Shigeru has one of the best breakthrough abilities in Blue Lock. Shigeru was able to create a new secondary weapon, the 44 Panther Snipe. The style Shigeru developed under the mentorship of Chris Prince, which combines the different skills and techniques he has learned in Blue Lock, as well as enhancing them with the training in the Neo Egos League, enabling him to score goals in a way that is unique to him. First, Shigeru locates his ideal shooting zone, which is approximately 44 degrees left, 19 meters from the goal. And second, he uses his cut in to penetrate the opponent's formation, reaching the ideal point. Third, he uses his centering technique to quickly fire a control shot towards the corner of the goal. He was able to enhance his already fast speed into a new way to get into a golden zone and score goals. This is a perfect way to showcase Shigeru's speed and demonstrate the uniqueness of how versatile he can be with his speed. Next, we have Asagi. Now, Asagi's weapon, you could say, is his spatial awareness and his direct shot. With spatial awareness, Asagi instinctively begins to analyze the entire field, giving him a vast understanding of the game, including his opponents and teammates' weapons. Based on his understanding, Asagi can make accurate predictions as to the flow of the game. These premonitions then allow him to envision an ideal play mid-game and execute it efficiently, even when faced with strong opponents in an unpredictable field. His spatial awareness is among the highest in blue lock, often rivaling and sometimes surpassing the other players' own visions, such as Nico and Rin. With his direct shot, Asagi first assesses the position of defenders and the trajectory of the ball, then lands a powerful kick to the ball's impact point in order to score a clean goal. In doing this, Asagi avoids having to overthink his positioning and next move and can just score a clean shot with no interference. It was noted by Nagi that Asagi has no wasted motion when performing his shot, implying that Asagi performs with flawless technique and control. His secondary weapon you could say for spatial awareness is metavision, a term used to describe a player's evolved vision that gives them an omnipotent perspective of the field. Using his eyes to constantly take in information from his central and peripheral vision, Asagi constantly collects data on every player, every play they make, and their positions on the field. After analyzing Kaiser's goal formula, Asagi adopted Kaiser's transcendent use of his vision into his own style of play and mixed with his spatial awareness, positioning, and reflex, Asagi is able to swiftly predict and shut down the plays of some of the best players in blue lock and even one of the best strikers in the world, and further create ideal situations for his own goals using his teammates in a way that is only possible for him. Asagi is also able to use his vision to read and understand the motivations or egocentrism behind people's playstyles and use that information to further stop them to defend his own goal and shut them down when he is attacking. His secondary weapon for his direct shot is his lefty direct shot. Adding as a supplement or side weapon to his right footed direct shot, Asagi is able to perform a left footed direct shot when his dominant right side is blocked that is strong yet not as powerful as his right foot direct shot. He has been able to continuously evolve and showcase the uniqueness of his weapons, mainly being his eyes that have continued to evolve. Now we have Baro. Now Baro's weapon is his middle shot. Baro's main method of scoring is his powerful and accurate shot from position near the middle of the goal. Baro can target the top right corner with incredible reliability, being almost guaranteed to score within a specific area of the goal, 29 meters near the middle. When outside of this specific area, however, Baro's accuracy can decrease sharply. He's performed the shot directly from kickoff, although it was saved. He's also shown that he can change the aim of the shot to the top left corner, but this again suffers from a decrease in accuracy. And finally, he performed the shot when he was too far to the side of his range and hit the post. For the Neo Eagles League, it's shown that Barrow has not only increased the range of his shot, but is now able to curve it more. For Barrow to advance the shot, he now has a secondary weapon called the Stealth Kill Shot. While training with Ubers during the Neo Eagles League, Snuffy points out to Barrow that while his middle shot is powerful and accurate, if a goalie can see it while coming, then it will be hard for Barrow to make the shot regardless of how talented he is. To improve this, Barrow trained his ability to shoot the ball in a crowded space and using his team as a wall to cloud the goalie's view and wait for the moment where the goalie is most confused, he is able to take a powerful and accurate curve shot that is so fast and close, it's impossible to react to even if the goalie does see it. Barrow uses to score Uber's first goal against Muchen. He also has improved his vision in learning Predator Eye that allows him to find the right timing to use his stealth kill shot. A vision meant for a goal scorer like Barrow that allows him to demonstrate his uniqueness and provide value to his team. The use of secondary weapons is starting to become more and more common now as we head closer to the end of the NEL. I have no doubt that once we get to PXG, we will see Ren and Shido and they will have secondary weapons as well to focus on their primary weapons. I like the idea of secondary weapons as everyone's main weapons have been revealed now for some time and this keeps the creativity flowing for everyone. I wonder after these secondary weapons will the blue loggers continue to gain even more weapons or will it be something else this time? How do you guys feel about the secondary weapons and you like the ones we have seen so far? Let me know how you guys feel in the comments. I thank you guys for watching the video, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll be back in the next one. Peace.